with uh, Padres first base coach slash outfield coach Wayne Kirby. Wayne, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, before we get into any of your guys that you deal with, I want to get in a little bit to with your career. You came up uh, with a really good Indians team. Talk a little bit about some of the guys that you played with, some of the guys that, that you learned from. Um, you know, um, I was with the Dodgers. I know we don't like to hear that word, but, you know, thank God. And, you know, they taught me how to play the game the right way, the fundamental way. And um, and they used to have a saying, it didn't matter how good your talent was, as long as you played the game the right way. So that that was that was in my soul. You know, I went over to, uh, to the Indians, got with Charlie Manuel, taught me a few things. Um, and the rest is... <laughs> just got to the big leagues and kept doing what I normally do, play hard and do the right things and play the game the right way. And that kept me in the big leagues for a while. Yeah, you you were uh, somewhat of a spark plug uh, when you came into the game. Talk a little bit about your role and how that has shaped you as, as a coach. I, I still remember the day I was playing center field in the majority of my career and Charlie Manuel had called me in the office. We were in Charlotte and AAA, and he said, you're playing right field today. And me and Charlie got this unbelievable relationship. And I said, I ain't playing no right field. I'm playing center where I always play. <laughs> you're going to play right field today, old man. You're going to throw it down right now. And I took off my shirt, and I said, yeah, let's go. And I ran out the door. But anyway, anyway, I ended up playing right field. And after the game, he said, you're going to the big leagues to play right field. I was like, huh? And I said, all right, let's go. Fast forward to now. Uh, you got some talented guys in this outfield, uh, and one guy in particular, Fernando, had to kind of learn on the fly. Now, he's, he's moved back to the infield now. What kind of things you think that he learned in the outfield can help him become that gold glove infielder that we all see him as? He slowed things down. Mm. <laughs> Realize that if you slow it down, and get the right grip and get the right hop, everything's come natural, man. I think by him going in the infield, he don't, I, I think he's not rushing now. That last play of the game, he just took his time and just threw the ball over the first base. And I'm like, all right, all right, I got you. But, um, you know, he's an exceptional, great athlete. I mean, I didn't do a lot with him. I just taught him the rules of right field and the rules of center field, what the do's and the don'ts. Uh, when you're throwing, what, what side of the base, what side of home plate you want to miss, hit the cutoff man, um, first step quickness, and, you know, a setup. And once once you introduce that and teach them about the wall, everything else comes in and play. The biggest thing for outfielders is you have to power shag to see that ball off the bat. Right. And it's not more like the individual work, it's more like the, you know, not the one-on-one -on -one work, just him going out there and reading the ball or seeing the ball hit off the bat. I, I think it's a little more focused because you, you can't you can't take a pitch off there. You, you got to be really rock and roll out there. And yeah, everybody said outfielders, you know, the people look bored. Yeah, heck yeah, outfielders bored. I played for 18 years. <laughs> they're, they're thinking and looking around, people are yelling at you. Yeah, it's boring. But it, it also relaxes you and, and can calm you down. What was I, yeah, what was I, doing? what was I thinking about? All right, what, what, who's going to hit the ball to me? What am I going to do with the ball? And, and things like that. And I think it, it probably slowed him down more than anything. He seemed to uh, take to the outfield pretty quickly. How, how was he absorbing the information that you were giving him? Great. It was great. Every day, you know, I would try to feed him something. And instead of cramming him down, I would try to feed him something every day. So when we first go into a series, we always throw, get used to the feel or whatever. Then as Tatis was, was, was beginning, I would give him another day on something either on miss on, on his, so I give him three throws to home plate. I want you to miss it on the third base side. Straighten your feet up, or I give him three throws and center field to third base. And just stretching his arm out, letting him know how good his arm is, charging the ball, and um, just think about a situation. Now, we got a chance to see that arm. <laughs> what, what, what would you say about his arm talent? He's up there. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely got a strong one. One of the other things, you know, that was 
I think a part of this team's identity, at least early on, was how you guys ran the bases. Uh, you guys have continued to run the bases. However, on the stolen base side, things have kind of have kind of slowed down. Is that just? Uh, the natural course of the season, or guys may be a little more fatigued than they were earlier in the season, and you guys make a decision to slow it down. Well, Junior, you know better than me. And you know, you can't steal first base. <laughs> Touche. 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 You can't steal first base. So, but the league understands that we run, and they're going to slide step, they're going to do anything to get us off our game, and we have to be patient. And um, at the right time, you know, we'll run. We'll run, but we also got to understand who's behind the plate, who's throwing, what's the time, and who's hitting. I don't want to run into an out with Manny or Tatis up. No, no, no. I mean, maybe with two strikes we can do that, but um, depends on who's on first, what's the situation of the game, we up or down, and um, go from there. If you look in the beginning of the season, we was aggressive because we was up. Yeah. Now, yeah. When, you, when you're down, the, the table flips, so... We're only being smart. What do you think will be the key down the stretch in terms of you guys, you know, finishing this thing the right way? Those 28 guys in that clubhouse, it ain't the coaching. I mean, we we, we done done our part. It's, it's those guys in there believing that they can do it, believing that they can um, execute their pitches, uh, get that timely hit, and and stay together. It's, it's, that, that's all what matters. I mean... In order to hit, you got to believe you can hit. In order to pitch, you got to believe you can pitch. If you believe in yourself and don't worry about nobody else, then well, what it matters. That's the that that's the way I grew up for 38 years in this game. You, you, number one person you got to believe in yourself. Yeah. After that is your team. You know, I remember talking to that guy in the stand about a week and a half ago, and he was talking about my team. I said, "Hey, this is my family, man. You gonna talk about my team like that?" I, and watch the game over there, Bubs. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, as always, man, such a joy uh, spending some time with you. Thanks for coming, coming on here this morning. All right, my man. Y'all be good.